So um, there's so much going on. I've decided to instead of doing lots of different videos, I'll do um, just one, which is uh, an update on what's going on on that week. So so this week uh, we're into the, the the first full week of July. Uh, let's have a look what's going on. So I'm at the top end of the plot. Now this is the area I put down a deep bed of compost um, and then I've sowed uh, a lot of different wildflower seeds and then I've also sowed in this corner um, some chives and there were a few other things but I've completely forgotten so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Um, it really has taken quite a long time for any of the seeds to germinate and all I'm doing every time I come up is to do a bit of weeding, uh, which I, I have already done here, just to try and give the uh, the, the seeds I've sown uh, a chance. Ultimately, um, and this is as this is the top end. It's also the the main wild area. So all I've really done, I'm just trying to grow almost like a wild bramble grass hedge along the back. Uh, some nice flowers on the brambles at the moment so we're going to get some good blackberries this year I think generally this year looks like a good year for blackberries anyway so uh, be good to get out foraging get some uh, free delicious fruits from the hedges but anyway I've, uh, I've just trimmed this I don't want it to get uh, I, I suppose I want it to concentrate its energy on on thickening up giving it a really nice place for animals wildlife and insects to, to, to live so um, I've trimmed up all of the that area um, earlier on and um, and I've also uh, gonna cut back each time the space around the pond just so it's easy for animals and insects uh, to get in at, at the water as uh, as well um, so that's looking pretty good um, let's have a look at the apple trees so this is the apple tree that, that had the only apples on on it out of all three trees last year. Um, doesn't have so many this year, so I'm going to keep keep an eye on that. We did have some very heavy rains earlier in the year and it knocked off a lot of the, the, the flowers, which is a shame. Um, but over on these two trees, now these two had nothing on them at all last year and I pruned them heavily. Um, so you can see there's a few apples. Actually, that one might be a nice early one. Uh, there's a few apples growing on that tree, but this one is absolutely abundant and we've really got some nice clusters which I'll probably need to thin out at some point. I mean, that's just gone crazy, so I'm really looking forward to homemade uh, apple juice and, well, the most important is cider, really. Now, just walking around the back of the, the sort of top end of the plot behind the, the shed. Um, so this is the area I've decided uh, any large green waste I'm going to put here because it just really doesn't fit on the main compost heap um, so uh, you can see I've um, I've got quite a lot well this is um, calabrese which I've just cut those down we'll have a look at that bed in a second and then previously with some area I was clearing at the house um, trying to sort out the front garden so so this is going to be a, 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 a larger um, compost heap just of green waste um, it's a bit more secluded here so it's a bit better it's just a, a bit further away, a bit farther away from uh, from the main main area. So, um, so yeah, I started to, to build that one out as well. Um, so let's actually go and have a look down at that bed of the Calabrese where I've taken those out. So uh, Calabrese were one of the first things I planted and we've really enjoyed them actually. So Calabrese, basically broccoli, um, it was these two strips here. Um, but they had been in the ground for a, for a bit too long. We'd had some good crop, uh, good good florets off them, so very tasty. And I'm not even really a fan of broccoli. Um, and then I've got some more Calabrese seedlings, which I'm going to plant in place. So it's been pretty handy having the strolch, which is this sort of um, this organic straw, uh, to keep the weeds at bay. Um, now it probably looks a mess, but. Uh, I, I love how the plot is looking at the moment. It's just abundant and the majority of the green, the living plant, is not weed. Uh, it's the green manure seeds. I sowed a, a big selection of green manure seeds because soil should never be bare. Nature on its own doesn't leave soil bare. It always wants it covered and 
whatever is growing in soil is sucking up carbon. And if you then don't dig the soil and you don't use chemicals or artificial fertilizers, you're going to sequester carbon at a very fast rate. That is my mission. Um, oh, I've just seen a butterfly land over here on the uh, Calabrese patch. It's absolutely stunning. I don't know if you can see it. I'll probably put in the shade there. But it's just sunning its wings. It's almost like a, 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 a matte black with a, sort of a dusky orange on it. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, I always love the, the wildlife that's just buzzing or crawling around at the moment uh, when I come up to the allotment. So so anyway, you're getting back to the, the, the green manure. It's um, um, That is my plan that I want to be this to be a little carbon factory, sucking up carbon and doing my bit. And, and I sat here earlier on and I was just quite impressed in, in a small space, just myself and a bit of help from uh, Emily and Arthur. I'm able to cover a plot. So I'm able to get food out of that plot and I'm also able to sequester carbon in the soil. It's quite impressive what can be done in a very small area and just shows that if more people did that at home, on borders, uh, it, on windowsills, uh, and, and absolutely at, uh, in farming as well, um, that uh, th this is a very good way of helping to reverse climate change. So uh, so that's the, the, the two Calabrese um, beds. And just behind me here, we've also layered uh, the cal some Calabrese leaves uh, I didn't want to put them all on because I don't want too much. Uh, I just want nice layers as I build this compost heap so it's a healthy compost heap. Uh, so it turns into something nutritious ready for uh, helping to encourage growth next year. Um, so, uh, so that's helping me build that. So I'm looking now at the, uh, the row uh, where I initially show, uh, sowed uh, corn flour, uh, which is these absolutely stunning purple flowers you can see and there's a few blue flowers down there as well uh, they're absolutely stunning uh, and and radish um, but ultimately the cornflower and radish are not the main event in this row it's the carrots uh, the radish is there just to get a, uh, a a crop a quicker crop when inter sowed with carrots and the cornflower is there to to add phosphorus that is going to make the carrots sweeter so uh, so i've finally pulled up all of the radishes so you can't see any in there at all um, they're actually just in the trolley behind there which will be going onto the compost heap uh, not the trolley but the radish tops um, leaving the cornflower in for now and you can see that we've got a few of the carrots starting to grow through so these are some of the carrot top leaves which guinea pigs love so that's all good so you can see those coming through uh, there's even more at the end uh, which is pretty cool and uh, with the radishes pulled up um, then a lot more light in now you should see um, uh, those carrots keep on growing through as well uh, just next to the carrots see my shadow there <laughs> um, we've got the um, uh, celeriac almost forgot what they were so they, they've really established well they were seed small seedlings uh, a few weeks ago, uh, they've they've established well, and we've been pretty lucky at the moment. We've had rain on and off, so it's been good. I've not watered at all for for weeks actually. Um, and to to be honest, actually, look looking at the amount of stuff that's growing here, I've also hardly been here the last few weeks. Uh, now that's not ideal, um, and it does mean that I need to come up and and get my back into it. Uh, but it's not like I've had to come up every day. I've not even come up every other day or every third day. So um, I've really not come up very much. And I'm also, you, you'll sort of see there's no there's no uh, netting uh, except for just over there, which we'll look at in a second and I'll explain why. But with the Calabrese, the, the, sort of the instructions say that you should cover it with EnviroMesh to keep off um, a cabbage white fly. Um, but... I did at first, and then I just thought, I'm going to see what nature does. And uh, what, what's absolutely amazing, uh, and I wonder if I can find it again over here, but what I've noticed is when I took that off, I did get aphids, but they stayed on only one of the calabries, and then all around there were ladybirds. And it just seems to be balancing itself really well. Oh, look, there's a bee just on that cornflower.
Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so it's difficult at an allotment because you've got plots all around you and you really don't know what those people are doing. I know for sure some people have used chemicals. So you can only do so much, but I'm doing all this biodynamic um, and fingers crossed it looks okay so far. What I was hoping to show you was a baby uh, ladybird, which looks nothing like a ladybird, but what is interesting is that this is alive and you need a few pests to attract the beneficial insects so they've got enough to eat so they stay here and they help you control the pests so it's everything working and living in harmony together uh, so that's what I've gone with um, just seeing if nature can do its bit and I just give it a, a helping hand so uh, let's have a bit of a look further down Okay, so we've got the one of two rows of onions. So these are looking pretty good. That bulb is starting to poke through. That's that's fantastic. Really happy with that. They're, they're looking very, very good. Uh, again, they were put in quite a while ago. Tiny, tiny, delicate uh, seedlings. So really happy with those. Ah, this is what I, well, sort of the, the mature version of what I wanted to show you. But in there, we have an aphid killer. Absolutely deadly in the garden. So these are everywhere which is just fantastic it shows i've probably got aphids but i can't see any pests at the moment um so the beneficial insects are definitely keeping the pests under control and the other thing that i just uh, i saw through the foliage over here let's have a look now i'm now about uh, well not quite halfway down but uh, yeah first quarter of uh this this side of the plot and th there's two rows here of um, primarily parsnips but I've intersoed with radishes again there's one row here one row there uh, but what I spotted through here is huge huge radishes now I'm not using any chemicals I'm not using anything artificial I was gonna pull up oh, that's a big one isn't it god let's have a look at this one here and see if I can Oh my god, <laughs> that's absolutely huge, I love that, and that's grown in a few weeks, which is just fantastic, um, so anyway, um, yeah, so I've got the radishes in those two rows, again, um, sort of uh, in a sea of green manure, a few weeds, which I've already done some weeding, um, we've got another ladybird in here that's just walked that fl flown off i think but anyway um so that's what i've got here so this area here i i uh i'm not haven't got, haven't planted anything here uh, oh, except for the parsnips come up to here but this is just green manure and i'm happy for that because it's um, nourishing and enhancing the soil uh, as well as sequestering carbon which is all good um the row over there is the monge too so they look to be growing okay Although this half really hasn't grown very much, that half's done pretty well. They all started off as seedlings and they were all sort of similar, but um, yeah, we'll just have to see how they get on. Uh, now this row here was was the um, first early potatoes, which are now in this 25 kilogram bucket, which is three quarters full, are uh, amazing potatoes. So all of this, this whole bucket, was grown using roughly 20 seed potatoes and apart from taking the seed potato leaving it on a windowsill to chit which is where the, the sort of sprouts start to come out apart from that apart from uh, planting them in the ground just making a hole in the ground and putting them in and covering them up I probably watered them three or four times if uh, at most and that's it so uh so that's that's just fantastic i'm really happy with that um and then the the um that's also potatoes there but there that's my no dig experiment so whereas this bed i've had to dig the soil over which i am avoiding as much as possible because i do not want to disturb the mycorrhizal fungi which will start to grow underground if you don't disturb it and also if you don't use chemical or chemicals or artificial fertilizers and the beneficial bacteria and all the other microorganisms 
when you dig over you disturb it and I'm not going to dig unless I absolutely have to which I had to with these potatoes um, but this bed over here I'm really looking forward to so that's growing nicely at the moment and as the flowers start to wilt I'll start to pull those up they should be really easy because that is a deep bed of compost very much like the wildflower bed at the top end so they should be easy to pull out of the ground without disturbing the soil at all but uh, that is the experiment uh, we're going to see how we get on with that a bit later on um, let's have a look down the end so I'm now at the bottom end now this is another deep bed of compost which unfortunately the grass is growing through uh, I haven't weeded this at all so the last time I did anything with this was probably a week ago um, now I can see a few of the um, wildflowers coming through um, so that's good um, I need to keep the grass at bay because this is my second go at growing a wild flower bed uh, before I just chucked seeds on the ground and looked to see what happened there was already lots of uh, grass and it just didn't work uh, but again the same as the top bed it's really taken a long time for the seeds to germinate there's been decent rain um, which no rain was the problem initially because of the drought we had earlier in the year um, so I'm just going to have to suck it and see uh, but generally based on uh, the green manure doing so well all over the plot now and I'd sown that quite a while ago and I was worried that the seeds just weren't going to germinate and if they maybe had got too dry but um, nature uh, is normally waiting to spring to life if you give it the right conditions so I just need to stick this one out uh, in this bed uh, keep the grass down and uh, fingers crossed I really really do want a uh, wild area down the bottom here with beautiful uh, pollen and flowers that are attracting all the beneficial insects um, so it's kind of enclosing the uh, the plot top and bottom um, I did have the success I did have was um, I've tried repurposing this car tire. oh look we've got some crickets I think if you can see them just on the just on the tire there don't know if it's it won't focus very well huh. are crickets a good thing don't know but again it's not our world we've got to learn to live with what's around us um so anyway um i'd i'd repurpose this car tire again trying to avoid stuff going to landfill we'd had some tires changed on on the car and um decided to try and make a flower bed out of it so I filled it um, with compost and sowed some seeds and they did grow so we've had fantastic bees buzzing around these uh, these flowers which has been amazing uh, the, the one issue is because uh, I'm learning all this stuff I couldn't tell you what it is I just know that it's beneficial because I chose it properly <laughs> when I ordered the seeds so, so that's all good um, now let's have a look at this bed which is the problem bed now I say this is a problem bed, um, it sort of is, I've got a lot of uh, thistles growing here, although I did do a bit of weeding, so there's actually a thistle there, and since the green manures sprung to life it's really helping to cloak the soil, and that's the point isn't it, you want to cover the soil with beneficial plants that's going to enhance the soil, but it's also going to keep the weeds back, it's going to help you do the hard work for you. Um, now this bit here you can sort of see a bit of a runway down the middle uh, it doesn't really there you go you can sort of see at the end now, so what I've been doing is cutting the green manure the, the green manure plants back and in the middle you can see there you go the leeks starting to come through which is which is great uh, I'm going to need to transplant those at some point but anyway, so that's the, the bed of leeks, which are sort of nestled nicely within the green manure. Um, you can see at the end here, there's quite a lot of thistles, and there always was when I uh, first prepared the, the, the plot. So next we've got spring onions down the middle. Um, look to be doing okay, not as good as the other bed up the top end, but that's okay. But next one we've got shallots. So these are looking pretty good I've actually not looked at these today and I haven't weeded any of this part of the plot at all you can see the bulbs starting to show which is I'm really happy with that actually some good foliage up above 
yeah happy with that and again happy with the strolch there are weeds coming through but it's really helped to keep everything down uh, next along now this is sprung to life in uh, the, the week that I didn't it's last week that I didn't come up here oh look we've got amazing whoa if you could just see that I don't know if it's a butterfly or a moth but it was fairly beautiful it may well be eating the leaf beet but uh, there you go you should always grow a bit more than you need because you're gonna some won't grow nature's gonna eat some and you'll get the rest um so anyway so this is looking really really good uh, a good crisp crop um happy with that so that's the leaf beet uh, now the rocket went to seed super quick um I, I got some but not really any um i've decided to leave it in leave it to go to flower that's beneficial for insects so it's all good so um so we're just going to leave the rocket as it is for now um, i found it actually a bit tricky harvesting the rocket i'm not sure if i'll grow it again but uh, i'll have to think about that and then we've also got some more lettuce over here because it grows well in this bed now the sort of the other experiment i did so this is a bit of a before and after this this is an after that's before which you can see the fleece over there so this one here i've taken the fleece off i'm going to leave it off now the reason i put it on is uh, actually for pigeons so i put in you can just see so this is uh, brussels sprouts uh the pigeons were just eating them and um to be honest the little seedlings were about this high and they're almost all eaten so i just decided to cover with some fleece uh, I'm hoping because the green manure is here, it's going to give the, the the sprouts some protection. I've got to see about that. What I have got to do is find where the other Brussels sprouts are and cut back some green manure to give the Brussels sprouts some light. I am hope, I'm thinking this one is it. That's that down there. Um, so, uh, and there's, there's this, oh, here we go. Here's another one here. So they've actually grown really, really well. A bit of a greenhouse type effect, I suppose. Um... So anyway, so that's that's what I'm going to do there. And then in uh, this bed here, this row is cabbages. I mean, you can see how much life is waiting to burst out into the open there. It's fantastic. So I'm going to take that off in a bit as well. Um, the sweet corn, I am super, super happy with. It's just incredible. It's waist height on me now. Um, and then in with the sweet corn is, let's just get in there. These fantastic dwarf French beans, and I just read in the biodynamic gardening book that the beans will climb up the sweet corn, so you make use of the space, and they are. You can see the bean here climbing up the amazing sweet corn. I mean, just, I'm just, just fantastic. What I also did was I also sowed a, a sweet corn, uh, sorry, not sweet corn, a dwarf French bean in between each of the sweet corn as well, because they can be grown closer together than sweet corn can so that's really really doing nicely uh the row i need to do something with and i'm not sure if it's ever going to get going but in here is a row of um of celeriac seeds so <laughs> the uh, green manure has taken over there and i've really not kept it at bay so we're gonna yeah i don't know i need to have a think about that one uh, okay, last couple of rows. Let's go and have a look. So this row here had uh, cauliflower. You can see a couple of cauliflower. Uh, yeah, you can see a couple of cauliflower, but the others got eaten, uh, eaten by the pigeons. Probably should have covered them up. Just wanted to see what would happen, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we've got a couple of cauliflower out of one, two, three, four, uh, five seedlings. Um, there we go. That's how it goes. We're sharing this place with nature, aren't we? Well, we are nature. We share this place with other living beings. We just have to go with it. Uh, now, these tomato plants are doing really well. And I also spotted, well, Arthur spotted a tomato on one of them. Just wondering if I could find where it was. There we go. I don't know if you can see it, but it's deep down in there. So that's just excellent. Um, I still need to go to the hardware shop and get some string because these um, bamboo canes are just propped against the tomato plants. Um, I need to 
uh, tie them on just loosely but just so they have the support all the time um, but we've got some nice flowers there which are going to turn into tomatoes i haven't grown tomatoes outside before so interested to see how they do on a biodynamic plot um, and then just next door we've got the other row of onions now this is quite interesting actually this row they're really they are really going for it i'd say better than the other row which is interesting because this bed was prepared differently to the other bed different organic um organic fertilizers and biodynamic fertilizers that's interesting and then um this row here so just at the back there that's where the brussels sprouts are but in the middle there's nothing i'm leaving it for green manure it's all good uh we're gonna see how we get on so I'd say it's all pretty successful so far. Now, I've just walked to the top end of the plot, but on the other side, I wanted to show you, this is one of the success stories. Um, not because it's amazing and ready to eat, but I um, I planted uh, three seedling rhubarb plants, um, and they all looked to have died. But this came back through the earth popped up through the soil and looks to be doing really well so I'm super happy with that and then next to it I was well I was hoping to have four rhubarb plants um, but two of them don't look to have come back through which is to be expected um, but this one here is doing so well and that was a transplant I basically dug it up from this area because this area I wanted to, I didn't want to perennials but I think because I'm down a couple of rhubarb plants at some point I'll dig this one up because I've cut this off a number of times and it's very hardy so I'm going to dig this one up and then I'll also dig that one up I'm going to put them over there and I'll get my four rhubarb plants all together which will be all good um, the other bit I wanted to show you is just a bit farther down here now this is one reason why we need birds uh, on the plot because we've got caterpillars now I have no idea what these caterpillars are I will do the research we've got a few on this plant which actually is a weed so they're welcome to it and then there's a few on this plant as heat as well um, so I'm just again I'm gonna oh, actually there's a few more back there I'm just gonna see how it plays out I'm gonna see what happens I'm gonna try and you know I've given the hopefully a helping hand but it's up to nature to try and balance things and if nature can't then again i'll give a bit of a helping hand but um yeah i'm going to do my research see what they are and just see how it plays out um but that's yeah a bit of a, a, a learner for that one which i need to find out i think probably one of the last things to mention because we've gone through most things for this week's update but um the, the reason why i'm growing the sweet corn so closely together is because it is air pollinated self pollinated um, so you have to grow sweet corn in a square or a circle or a rectangle um, some people do grow them just in a single row but the advice is that you grow them like this in a, in a rectangle so that the wind helps to uh, move the pollen from one sweet corn plant to another so they can pollinate each other I just saw that blackbird land over there on the post. They normally have an absolutely amazing song, really beautiful. So I'd say that's probably it. Um, that's it for this one. Uh, I'm going to finish off here. It's about seven o'clock in the evening. It's an absolutely stunning evening. Beautiful sun just setting over in the, in the west. I'm going to uh, take these uh, the weeds that I pulled up and the radish tops, pop them on the compost heap. And that's probably it for today. Well, I'm going to take the potatoes home and I'm going to work out how to uh, make a clamp because I am definitely not going to eat a whole 25 kilo bucket full of potatoes in the next week or so. And I want to keep them fresh. So uh, yeah, I'm going to work out how to make a clamp uh, to keep them stored for quite a while. 
So um, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks if you've bothered to watch to the end, almost about 30 minutes. So uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not nice to uh, be able to give you an update that everything's going pretty well. A few failures, mostly successes. And uh, let's see how we get on in next week's update. Thanks. There was one more thing I wanted to show you. So down here, so when, when I talk about growing biodynamically, not using artificial chemicals and artificial fertilizers or dangerous chemicals, it's not that you don't use anything. You just use what nature produces and then you give it a helping hand. So uh, just here we've got stinging nettle liquid manure and that is as simple as cutting a load of nettles down, putting them in a bucket, filling them up with some water and leaving it for 10 days. Then you just strain out the water. That's what you get here. So that's the concentrated uh, version. And then I just fill up um, uh, fill up the watering can and then it's, it's about 10%. Uh, so it's 90% water, 10% uh, stinging nettle liquid manure. Uh, give that a swirl around and then that's going to go on the tomato plants. So that goes on the tomato plants roughly every 14 days to give them extra nutrients because stinging nettles have amazing nutrients in it or in, in them already. So we're putting that into the water and we're putting that onto the tomatoes. We're also putting it in the ground before uh, uh, watering the ground before we plant or sow. We're putting it over the calabrese. It's a really amazing fertilizer, completely natural. And apart from the tiny cost of water, uh, if you get it out of the tap, although actually don't get it out of the tap because that comes with horrible stuff in it like chlorine, fluoride and things like that. Uh, use rainwater uh, so then it's completely free. There's absolutely no need to buy any fertilizers, uh, especially not artificial ones because they do not work with the soil microlife. So, uh, so that's actually my last job here is uh, put on some of the stinging nettle liquid manure onto the tomatoes. And then we're good to go. That is it this time. Thanks.